All right, and it says we are live. So welcome everybody. Today we are going to be talking to Richard about AI. Um, so Richard, why don't you give us a little bit, like tell us a little bit about yourself. Like like what are you teaching online and like how long you've been teaching? Let's give well, a little bit of... How long do I have? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Just, <laughs> uh, just really quick. Okay, uh, I've always been in education since oof, 1996. I be became a teacher. Um, always worked in education, then did a stint uh, working for myself doing corporate training. And then I moved to Barcelona to do corporate training for one of the largest uh, recruitment companies. And I was training their systems. And this is where I discovered as I traveled around to many offices in Europe and around the world, that English was a huge problem for for many, many people and was holding them back in their careers, not only candidates, but the actual my colleagues that I was working with. So COVID, like for so many, was a changing point for me that I thought, okay, it's time to go out on my own. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed working from home. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because people say, you know, I want to be with people. And I'm like, mm, I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. I want to work with people, but not be with them. So I started fully teaching online then. I mean, I had, I had when I came over to Barcelona in 2011, people started to come up to me and they say, do you teach English? And I was like, I, I know, but I'll give it a go. And I started doing just teaching English to everybody and anybody. And this was, this was a, a huge mistake. But then I corrected that in 2021 when I just started to focus purely on the HR sector because it was a sector I knew. It was a sector where people knew me. And that's what I focus on at the moment. Teaching. Okay, I want to stop you really quick. So I oh. talk about I talk about niche a lot, and I know this oh. isn't about niching down, but I do want to ask you why do you say it was a huge mistake to be teaching everybody and anybody? Because this is something teachers need to hear. Okay, because you, to put it bluntly, you are a jack of all trades and a master of none. Okay, what you want to be able to do, and what you want to be seen as is, ah. I need to improve my my English or I need to improve my communication skills. Um, who is the guy or who is the girl who can help me as a real estate agent? That's okay. Richard. Perfect. That's Jillian. That's so I, I think this is the most important thing. And I'm going to show you a little bit about, maybe a little bit about niching with uh, with AI um, and knowing your your clients. Because the problem is, I always give the example, when you want to, if you have to get brain surgery, do you go to your local doctor to do that? Or do you go to a specialist? You go to a specialist. Specialists so cost a lot more because they are specialists. What, what was the difference that it made in your business when you went from like teaching everybody to teaching HR specialists that needed to improve their English? What difference did that make in your business? It relaxed me a lot. And you're going to say, huh? What does he mean by that? I mean, I could focus on a curriculum that I could deliver to these HR people and not be thinking, oh, Miguel is uh, 17. What do, what do I have to do with his lesson? Uh, this guy is 56. What do I have to do with him? And what industry is he in? It just gave me a lot more focus. And it eased the burden of, okay, this is who I am. This is how I market myself. And I wasn't, I, I'll take on this person. I mean, I, I have people who say to me, I'm a beginner. Will you take me on? And I say, no. I say, I only work business English for intermediate, upper intermediate, and in the HR sector. Okay, perfect. And did it improve your pay as well? It did. It did. Um, I I vary depending on the client. I, I vary, but I will do anything from uh, 50 euros up to 120 euros an hour. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, okay. So um, you've been using AI in your business for how long? Um, I've been using AI since... Since it came out in 2022, because we have to remember that AI is really new. Okay. okay. I, I mean, it, that it's exploded onto the market. Sure, there was AI al algorithms many, many years ago, and people say it goes back to, I don't know, 70s. But AI, as we know it, has only been here since uh, 2022, and that was with um, ChatGPT, of course. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you the floor, though. Uh, it's all yours, so you can Ooh. teach Okay, excellent. Um, can we take questions and, and do people, ah, yes, uh, do, 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 people can send in their questions, can they, or, or can they chat with yes, us? Yes, yes. Okay. So there, there is a chat screen on here that Richard can see um, okay. if you go over and click on live chat. So if anybody has any questions during this, um, go ahead and type in your questions and he can help you during the live broadcast too. So 
yeah so so if there's if there's any uh, questions what i want to show you is i want to show you kind of the mistakes that people make with ai and then i want to show you um how we can use ai for various different things and and again um Gillian, if you have any uh questions as well you feed them in through uh through me okay so the first thing that most people let me just see if i can share my screen uh tt window and i want this one okay so uh you should be able to see my screen now with chat gpt and i actually use the free version of chat gpt i use a lot of different tools i mean i'm a bit of an ai addict if i have to be honest i mean i, I just keep <laughs> buying ai tools and i have to stop but i can't um but you'll see here that uh, I, I i have little chats that i've done hr challenges for non-natives uh but zombie origin virus spread i'm not sure which that what that was um friends series overview really really interesting one as well difference in past tenses so the first thing you have to do is and if there is one thing that i want people to remember one phrase that i'm going to say is if you want better answers from chat gpt ask better questions okay because what happens is people go to chat gpt and they say write me a lesson plan about the past the past perfect ChatGPT gets all of its knowledge and tries to write this lesson plan. But people then come out and say, oh, well, that's not, that's not ideal for my students. And I say, yeah, but did you tell ChatGPT who your students were? So this is really, really important to set up. The, 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 the first thing is the context of what you wanted to produce, uh, who is it for, and what, what is the solution you're trying to produce for these people? Okay, um, I always liken it to the very early days of the um, of the internet when search engines came out. If anybody remembers Alta Vista, and people used to go in and they type in, you know, uh, cars for sale, and then they'd get fifty six million results, and they say this is garbage. But what I said to people is, again, type in exactly what you're looking for: cars for sale in Denver, Audis for sale in Denver, second hand, and that would give you better results. So the better questions you will get better results. Um, can you can you can you give me an idea? I'm just going to stop my screen because I just want to do one thing. Um, can you give me any ideas that you would like me to uh, create All right. something with? Well, this is where there's kind of a light there. So I'll give you an idea. But um, I want if anybody has a specific lesson that they are planning on making or thinking about making for their students, go ahead and type it in and Richard will do it. Um, but what ah. I what I would, what I teach is I teach uh, writing lessons for like using the third grade Common Core standards. So okay. could you create me a writing lesson for like third graders? Okay. Can I can I address uh, one of the questions first that? Oh uh, yeah, the, go ahead. Go ahead. Beyond Borders with English has actually asked, and this is this is something I wanted to uh, delete. That's why I said I was going to stop sharing my screen. Um, one of the things that you can do with ChatGPT, which is really, really useful, is you can actually go in and you can give it custom commands, okay? Um, the first thing you can do is you can, and, and this is really useful, um, you can tell it to refer to certain books, okay? So if I go in here to custom commands, let me just hide that, okay? so. Uh, I go down here, and this is on the new, on the free version, on the paid version. And I go into custom instructions, and here I can tell it what exactly I want it to do. So I say you are an English teacher with 20 plus years experience. Okay, That's the first part. Um, I can then actually tell it to reference books, to show me where it's got its sources. This is super powerful. And I'm going to give you an example of this. Uh, now, so fingers crossed, ChatGPT works because they say don't don't work with technology or animals or kids. So we've got <laughs> we've got one out of the three. So let's have a look. I'm just going to say uh, define the past perfect. Okay, just a just a simple a simple command. Actually, real quick, can I go back to this question really quick? Yeah, of that course. you were addressing. Okay, so one of the ways that I one of the ways that I um, have optimized Chat GPT in the custom instruction, um, you can say like um, I I want uh, the answers like when I'm talking to people, I want them to be 
in um, this uh, this kind of tone. So I want it yes. to be like a casual or professional or, you know, like funny or humorous, like, like whatever your personality is, this is how mm -hmm. you're going to kind of like make chat GPT your personality yes. um, instead of it being like robotic. Um, right. And you can also tell like what your name is, what your programs are, who you teach. So mm -hmm. that way you don't have to write it every, so like you could say like, my name is Jillian. Um, I teach um, third graders creative writing um, using third grade common core standards. I want my responses to be very casual and using simple English because my learners, um, a lot of them are ESL students. Um, so like anything that is going to like apply to anything I have gone through when I've used it for like my social media marketing, I would put things in there saying like, um, this is my audience size. These are my email open rates. These are this, I'd put all of that in there. And so chat GPT has like a ton of information about me. And then, um, I might go in there later on and say like, what are, um, what's a good way to like, what is a good email subject to use to increase my email open rates? And they'd say, Hey, Jillian, I, we looked and, and with your email open rates of 25%, we think that you can improve it and increase your email open rates by using, um, this title, uh, in your, you know, casual voice that you told us mm -hmm. to use. Um, so now it's kind of got like, it's kind of got like everything. I put everything in there, <laughs> but it no. will remember too. Even if you don't tell it in there, it will remember yes. previous things you've asked. Yes. So um, here, just just uh, it works. It sometimes it works slightly better than, than other times. But I actually have that book here. Okay, the English Grammar News by Raymond Murphy. So it says on page fifty four, the the page numbering it gets slightly wrong, but on page fifty four. We actually have uh, modals instead of actual bat. So I can, when I was just doing some some tests a while ago, uh, it actually gave me the unit number as well. Okay, and it should say, uh, bup, 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 bup. okay. So now it's deciding not to do that. But in my previous tests, it actually gave me the unit number. Okay, so I know that it is referring to that book. Because one of the problems we have to be careful with uh, ChatGPT, maybe not so much now, but in the early days, uh, a couple of uh, good couple of months ago, it was hallucinating and it would make up things. Okay, now here here's the first thing uh, that people get scared with ChatGPT. It's going to take our jobs. Anybody can become an English teacher. Anybody can become a teacher because they have all that knowledge there. But only you can really verify that that knowledge is valid for your particular audience. Okay. I know nothing about third graders. So if I went in and created a plan for a third grader, I might say that's perfect. But you, Gillian, would say, no, that's, that's not perfect. Okay. It's at too high a level. It's at too low a level. So do not be afraid of this. ChatGPT is just a tool. It's not at the moment. It's not your enemy. Okay. So uh, just think about that. Now, um, as Gillian said, if I go in, oops, I don't want to upgrade. If I go in here and I go back to the custom instructions, I can put anything I like here. Now, the only danger that I see here is with this. If you put in the custom instructions and you say, um, I want you to write social media uh, posts for me. If the custom instructions are set, uh, that you put in are that I'm an English teacher, it's going to go into English teacher mode. So it mightn't give the best output there. So just be careful because sometimes I forget that I've put in custom instructions and I ask it to, let's say, write an email. But then I look at it and I say, no, that, that email looks more like a lesson plan because I've told it that any output has to be in a lesson plan. So what I would suggest is um, create many of these custom instructions and just have them like in a notepad that you can copy and paste them in. So when you want to do, let's say, a social media campaign, you can copy and paste in that social media campaign, et cetera. Um, I like to, to either use the you are or the act as prompt, which is you are an English teacher with 20 plus years experience. Give it more information. Um, you have taught, uh, you said third graders. Yes. 
okay for the uh, for the last 15 years and oh, so you, you don't say i am you say you are i i i like to say i i mean you could use and you could say i am but here what i want to do is i want to draw in the knowledge that it it has of okay. all the vast knowledge that is it has okay, okay. um and you know the exact uh issues and challenges that they can face that they can face when learning english okay um you can say here i want you to always respond in a, a casual but professional way um and check your answers before um outputting them okay sometimes this can this can just give um a, a little bit uh before oops uh, before outputting okay or before generating we could say um one of the good things that i like about ChatGPT is it is forgiving of spelling mistakes okay mm -hmm. um enable this for new chats okay so let me just go into a new chat and let oh, me just I always tell them i always tell them too um i don't want you to sound robotic if okay. you ever get an yeah. answer that sounds robotic and you tell them, make it sound less robotic or sound like human uh, yeah you you can put in a lot of those okay now here i've asked chat gpt who are you okay and it already knows hi there uh, i'm here as your friendly english teacher with over 20 years of experience specialized in teaching third graders okay so um give me give me your question again Gillian, that you had you wanted to i want to create a writing plan based on um where okay i want to cre create a creative writing lesson where we are teaching the kids how to use um adjectives i want this to be for a group of 10 kids um and it's going to be an hour lesson. Uh, the group is made up of uh, 10 kids and it is for an hour. Okay, so you've done a couple of really good things there. One of the things that uh, I like to do is I like to also tell it how long the lesson is. And another thing that I do is I would also say uh, this is for an online lesson. I was going to say that's not in your, your automatic commands, which should it, no. like yeah but yeah 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 so so okay. now the other thing is yes it's not in my custom commands because what if i suddenly decide oh i want to teach this uh friend's child who is the next door neighbor and then it says okay well make sure you have zoom etc okay so play around with those custom commands and i would keep a good batch of them that you can copy and paste them in so let's have a look here okay nice online whiteboard virtual stickers timer okay what do you think julian because as i say i'm not I, I i just specialize with adults okay all right um find objects in the home describing using adjectives each student takes okay um I, here go back up to the the first one okay so start with introduction start with uh, icebreaker explain adjectives okay um that's that's how i would teach this lesson actually interactive activity scavenger hunt so i for this one i wouldn't personally do have them going around i would have them sitting in their chair and say okay now everybody find a noun um, this I, this is the actual class that i teach so everybody find a noun and they'll look around and you know they'll be like okay got it got it got it right and i remind them what a, a noun is okay find a noun they'll find a noun okay so now um I want you all to tell me, like, give me an adjective for the noun that you found. So I, that's actually something that I do. Story building, collaborative, criticism, story. Wow. Oh, hold on a second. So the, the other thing that we could do is in the custom instructions, I might say, um, if I ask, if I ask for an activity, do not, uh, do not suggest any where the children have to use websites okay it must be in their home environment okay I, i'm just i'm just thinking out loud here okay, okay? now so, so this will be for new chats so it won't uh it, it 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 won't add this here now what i like to do here is um i like to maybe copy the 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 second point here okay and then i would simply go in and say uh please expand on this 
and then I would just paste it in and give me detailed and concrete uh, concrete examples. Okay. And when I go in here, it's now going to expand out in that. Okay, student turn, five minutes, presentation, etc. I tend to always go in and ask it to detail out more of each section because it won't it won't by default give you such a big long explanation because there is it does have have like a, a memory capacity that it can actually output something called tokens um so if you ask for too much in one chat it may just forget or it may just go off and do something else okay how's that looking for you now it, uh, it looks good it's actually it's it's pretty much um I want I I wouldn't do it for 15 minutes. I think mm -hmm. that would be condensed, but like yeah, this is a really good it's a really good basis for a lesson that I actually teach. Okay, so excellent. Yeah. Um here I could uh, I could ask it what are the um what is the ideal teaching methodology for teaching uh this age group. Okay. So it's going to go off, it's going to look at all of its information here okay hands-on learning visual aids interactive technology okay uh d, d, d. okay group activities which is exactly the lesson plan that it created yeah yeah so i might i might go back in here now and say on custom instructions and say uh when creating activities make sure you use um, a variety uh, including and then I could put in, you know, storytelling. Uh, what else did I have there? Hand, Hands-on learning, etc. Yeah. Hands-on learning. Okay. Because again, the more the more information I give it, the better the output is going to be. So, so this is this is the difference. Um, use the command you just put in. Um, this is the difference that makes the difference. That the more information you give it, the better. Now. Here's a here's a little uh, tip, and I'm based in Europe, so uh, I have to be careful of this. When I create material for my students, sometimes uh, I see, oh my God, the spelling, and apologies, the spelling is wrong because it's North American. We don't use Zs. We don't. We put in our Us when we say color, etc. So what you can actually do is, oops, did I? Did you lose me? You did. Let me just put that in. Sorry, let me just put this back in here. So what you could also do, eh, let me just reshare my screen because that has, oh no, hold on, I can just do this. Um, what you can do is in the custom commands, I could actually specify, and I think uh, hopefully this answers the question that was put in there. Um, always use uh, British English in your output. Okay. Is it this question that you're asking? Regionally? I, 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 I guess. Okay. Uh, my students are based in, let me see, Spain. So please use examples that they would uh, understand. Okay. So, so again, lots of ideas coming up here. Okay. So you might say, okay, well, if my students are, for example, Chinese students, I want to make sure that ChatGPT outputs things that will be relevant to them or to their culture, et cetera, because maybe, yeah, maybe I don't see these things in, uh, in Spain, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything, anything else there before we, we move on? I think, uh, I think just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that I would say is always give context. Then what you can do is you can tell ChatGPT the format of the output that you want, okay? So I might say, um, create a worksheet that will have questions and a space for answers, uh, and then provide the answer key below, okay? Sometimes when you, when you create uh, a worksheet, 
it doesn't act, okay now it's decided to do it's decided to go uh and do its own thing here um but here it has actually given me the answer just below the actual uh question here okay so i might just say ah uh, uh, and it gives me the answer key okay so uh please do not put the answer below the question okay and we'll just see what it comes back with there okay so here what i could do is i could just copy and paste that now into um a simple uh word document or a, or a google uh sheets document and then provide that or sorry a google uh, uh word document and then i could provide that as an actual resource that they could actually use okay okay um the other thing that you can do is you can always regenerate the answer if you're not happy. And if I click on that, an int interesting thing that happens is you'll see a two of two down here. Okay. Uh, was this response better or worse? I can say it was better. But I can always go back and see the previous response that I gave. Have you ever gotten it where they're like, they give you two answers and they have you click one? I, I had that pop up for the first time yesterday. It gave no, me I didn't. Answers. I haven't seen that. And it was like a, a block thing, right? And it said, here are two answers um, to help us improve your experience and to get to know you better. Would choose the one that you like better. And it was like a block format, which I had ah. that pop up. And I was like, okay, that must be a new thing that they're rolling out. But I, I haven't seen that yet. Yet. Now, I, and again, remember that a lot of the times the rollouts that they will do will be for North America and us poor Europeans get it like two months later, you know, every, uh, everybody's okay. well, talking about all these plugins. Yeah. <laughs> and then after you click it, it will have the same thing there where you'll have like one of two and you can go back and look at the other one. Oh, um, another okay. thing you can do, cause you're doing worksheets. If you're creating your own slides for students, you can say, create me a lesson plan on slides. I want 15 slides for a 30 minute lesson teaching this. Um, mm -hmm. And then it will actually break down what you have to put on each slide too. Yeah, so I mean, there's there's a huge amount of possibilities that, that you can do. What I always say to people is give yourself maybe half an hour a day or half an hour a week or an hour a week just to play with ChatGPT. But do time yourself because you can go down a rabbit hole and you can spend hours uh, doing this. The idea of ChatGPT is it's not going to substitute you. It's going to help you. It's going to save you time. Okay, it's going to save you um, a lot of energy, etc. And you can customize because what I might say now is, uh, let me just bring back my screen here. I might say, uh, can you adjust this? Can you adjust? Can you adjust the original lesson plan for fifth graders? Uh, for fifth grader level. Okay, and it should go in and it should now adjust that. Oh, cool. Very so, cool. so this is where for focusing in and for, for helping students, you can actually really do this that you might say, well, one of my students is probably two of my students are more of a, maybe a little bit just under fourth grade level. So I can actually go in and then I can adjust that. Um, could we do this? The old fashioned way, yeah, we could, but we would spend hours and hours and hours trying to do this. And and maybe we would we would get it wrong. Um, one of the things that I like to do is um, ask it like questions. Uh, what are the um, issues that fifth graders might have when learning English, uh, which is which is not their native language. Okay, and I might say something like, um, I want you to think outside of the box with your answer. And give, now I also like to say, give me at least um, 10, uh, 10 challenges. And then rate them so that you output the top three uh, at the end uh, at the end of your output. Output. Okay. So here, what it should do is it should use its vast range of knowledge here. Okay, and it's actually rating these here. Okay, uh, pronunciation. Okay, nine out of ten. Reading comprehension. 
Uh, what do you think, Jillian? I could I could also do this too. Okay, com complex grammar structures. Um, I feel like I feel like this is I feel like this is kind of basic. So okay, so I guess it depends on what you're using it for. Okay. What I would use this for, this question for particularly, is I would use it as um, almost almost like, say you're going into a new niche that you've never taught before, you're mm -hmm. really interested mm -hmm. in it, but you don't have the experience, you need to do some market research. I would use a, this as kind of market research yes. to learn how to position myself mm -hmm. to actually selling these lessons. Um, so um, I would ask it, well, I would ask it uh, more... I would I would ask it for more uh, social social and personal challenges. I think so that I would know like how it affects them personally. I want I want what are their challenges that affect them on an emotional um, or personal level? I think that's that's what I would ask it. Um, um, it say that to me again. What are their emotional challenges? Did you say? Yeah. What, what are, how do these challenges affect them emotionally or person personally? Because when it comes down to it and you're selling your lessons, um, and this isn't about lesson planning, but this is about selling your lessons. Um, mm -hmm. you need to know what their, their pain points are so that you can actually sell to those pain points. So here we go. Right. Right. Yeah. So now, yeah. you know, frustration, self-consciousness. So all of these things, things are things that you're going to be able to use in your marketing. So if you go and you market your lessons on like YouTube, then you know um, what some of the, the mm -hmm. challenges are so that you can start creating your content to really um, help you identify with the student more and help, help them identify with you more really. Yeah. Um, am I making sense there? I no, no, I no. I, and this is perfect because I, you know, a lot of the times, this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to tap into its knowledge and its vast knowledge and say, okay, what are the challenges that these kids have? And sometimes we know some of the challenges, we know some of the pain points, but we say, ah, I never thought about that, about maybe overcoming stereotypes. Um, can I, can I just, can I pop? Yeah, okay. Of course. So what I would do here um, is personally for me. So say I wanted to create like content on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create a YouTube short. So I would say, give me 10 ideas for short videos under a minute long that start with a hook and help, um, or help with, um, uh, overcoming stereotypes or, or frustra frustration or something and teach English. Okay. So, so on how third graders, um, learning English can, uh, deal with frustration. And these might be, these might end up coming out to be junk, but you might get something good out of them. Frustration. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I, I'm just going to come up with the ideas first, and then we'll, we'll look at, for example, the hook. The frustration monster. Okay, so these are so okay, so these are educational short videos. It would be a little bit a little bit longer, probably. These like, videos super, create a superhero theme video where characters face. So this would be if you were running a kids channel because we're hmm. we're you because you geared it towards third graders. Um, I'm, you I'm, this is the slight problem with having those custom instructions that sometimes it goes well. You told me I was I was helping third graders. So so maybe if you suddenly want to target the parents, then it it may just give it uh, a little problem. Now now it seems to be it wouldn't it wouldn't because you could say I want these videos to be geared towards um, the parents. Um, yes. Like I, like you could just say that like. Uh, yeah. The videos. To helping the parents help their children with these struggles or something. To, like uh, Say to parents so that they can help the children. Okay. So, so again, just, just from uh, uh, 30 minutes that we've been here, we've actually gone through lots of different ideas here that people can actually see. Understanding the frustration of language learning, quick tips for parental support, 
uh, interactive language games at home. Okay, so what I might do here is I might copy this. Uh, now write the outline for a script for for this. And this the the outline you're going to have to tweak because it's going to come out. <laughs> yeah, and, and and sometimes what what happens is it gives you the scene trans transitions, uh, etc. But it could give you, I mean. It could definitely this is so cool. This is such a cool game that they gave us too. Like this is a short that mm -hmm. you could create on your YouTube channel where you're teaching kids, where you're teaching parents how to teach their kids English, like on your YouTube yeah. channel for parents. And if, if you didn't see my video about why I don't think that teachers should make kids YouTube channels um, for kids, you go back and watch that. But <laughs> this is something because the kids aren't buying it, but there's, I got a whole YouTube video on that, but mm. Yes, this is a perfect, this is a perfect idea here. Yeah, um, I mean, the other thing that we can do, and this can be quite um, quite useful to do as well, um, that, uh, let's just see if we get this right. Let me go in. Um, okay, uh, I want you to act as, uh, well, okay, so let me see. Um, let's do a role play. Um, I am the teacher of third graders. You will take the role of a parent who is concerned about their progress. We are going to, um, I'm going to interview you and you will come up with answers to help me understand uh your frustrations okay now sometimes this works well okay but the idea is that that we could do this um i will start i will start with the question how are you today okay never done this one this is market research that you're doing yes so here i can now obviously the parents the simulator parent here has a has a good level of English. Okay, um, okay. So, can you tell me what specific uh, aspects they struggle with, in your opinion? Okay, we, are, we try practicing at home flashcards, but it seems like we could use some additional reinforcement or maybe a different approach in the classroom. I'm curious to know if there are any creative activities or strategies you find helpful in making vocabulary uh, stick for kids. Uh, well, uh, can I ask, how long do you spend with them uh, when you practice at home? Okay. So what is the purpose of doing this? The, the, the purpose of this and I, and it is that you can do some sort of, uh, like as if you were interviewing the parents so that you can see, okay, well maybe let's have a look. Ah, uh, okay. I, I mean, I could start suggesting to parents, okay, maybe 15, 20 minutes, or I could say, okay, well, I know I, I and again, when you're marketing to the parents, I know what can be challenging is that you may feel that your child is not remembering the, the vocabulary. And a lot of the times, what you may be doing is practicing with flashcards. So these are the pain points that they're coming out with as well. Okay. And it, now we would have to create a better prompt, but you can go in and you can say, okay, this is interesting information for me for marketing to those parents. Okay. I'm putting myself in their shoes because we might say, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you have to use flashcards and blah, blah, blah. But again, if you put yourself or get ChatGPT to put itself in the shoes of one of those parents, you can start looking at that language there. Okay. Um, parents, I mean, as a parent, you may feel that, you know, the teacher needs to do more, but there is also a responsibility that you need to maybe share more ideas in uh, or, or share more English practice in the household, et cetera. Okay. So now you could take this. You have already learned that the struggle is they, they only use flashcards. Now you, exactly. could, now you could create a new chat where you're not in the thing and you could tell chat GPT, give me 20 ideas that I could share with parents to help them practice English at their own time in their own home. And then from this, you could create a YouTube video. You could create a short, you could create a blog post, you could create an email, you could create a, uh, 
just tips to give to your parents, no matter where you're marketing to them. You guys exactly. don't realize what gold that he just shared with you. Like that, that was good. Okay. Yeah. So, so please think outside the box and don't come back with uh, answers like uh, use flashcards. Okay. I want you to dig deep into your knowledge and come up with ideas that are uh, that are perhaps out of the box thinking. Okay, let's see what it comes up with. Storytelling with props. Okay, scavenger hunt vocabulary, uh, cooking adventure, puppet play, nature journaling, DIY English board game, mystery letter challenge, family story circle, comics. I, I mean, yeah, there's definitely videos that you could create there. You guys, like this, this is if you are if you're trying to market your lessons as an independent online teacher, you which you should be. <laughs> yes, you have to be marketing. You can't just I, I, I always say this. You can be the world's best teacher. But if you don't have a marketing strategy, you are the world's best kept secret. Doesn't yes. matter. So by using chat GPT, like Richard just showed you, you have your marketing strategy. Yes, you're going to have to get better at it. Yes, you're going to like you're going to have to play around and learn how to use chat GPT and learn how to make the videos and everything. But by doing this, you have just created a marketing strategy. You're going to improve on it as you practice, mm -hmm. as you get better, but it's there. And, and, and even there you could, you could use that idea of the flashcards and say, you know, a lot of online teachers will tell parents they should use flashcards at home, but that is ineffective. I want to show you five different ideas that you can use and create that video. And then you can have, uh, they could sign up for the other 15 ideas that you have. This is okay. gold. Yeah, so uh, I mean, this is it, that once we start thinking outside the box and I can I can uh, send you links, uh, Jillian, I'll post them in the group to these chats so people can see the structure because that's also uh, really important as well. Because any chat that that you do, there is a nice little button up here which you can just click on and it will just share that chat. I didn't know that. Ah. <laughs> I actually didn't know that. That's cool. I, I never even noticed that. So now the next question that I, and he'll show, he'll share that in the group. So if yes. you are not a member of the online teacher success and support group on Facebook, go ahead and join it. It's online teacher success and support. Um, and, uh, Go ahead and, and he'll, that will be in our group where he can share it. But now the next question that I have to ask you, um, I use a lot of different tools for AI. Mm -hmm. I, I don't just use chat GPT and we don't have to get into all of them, but are there other tools that you recommend teachers looking into besides chat GPT? Uh, with, I mean, specific, specific teaching tools, for example, there were some mentioned that uh, don't come to me now, but I use I use different ones. There's one plugin that I use for Chrome, which is called Voila. And this Voila, one, like French V. Uh, yeah, Voila. See a French V. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can just open up a new tab here. And what this allows you to do is just let me see. Ah, yes, okay. So uh, this was one that I bought uh, a while ago. And it just persistently stays in Chrome. So where am I here in Chrome? Let me share my screen here, share screen. And yeah, okay, so I just, for example, I just had this uh, window open here. Can you see this? Yeah, okay, oh, it's opened up another window. Um, okay, so what I can do here is I can actually just press uh, Control and M and this little voila screen comes up. So what I find useful about this is that sometimes if I'm in a class and I'm not sure, I can just say, uh, define the present perfect and its use. Okay. And it will go off and it won't interfere with anything. I'm not opening up another window and it just comes in and it just does that. Okay. It's using, uh, here it's actually using chat GPT four and I, do, I don't have a subscription to chat GPT four. It's just, uh, with this plan that I have. That's so this, cool. That's, and yeah. that's a paid thing, right? Or that's that's a paid one. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a paid one. I got it on a, a on a special, but it comes up like that. Now, one of the things again that I have found with ChatGPT, and I, I always wonder whether they do it purposely, that sometimes it makes mistakes, and I think that maybe that is built in just to keep us on our toes. 
so that we don't just say, ah, I mean, ChatGPT knows all the answers. So again, this is where nobody's going to take your job because you are the expert in what you do. ChatGPT is just the tool that's going to help you a little bit. Um, I have another tool that uh, that I use as well. Let me just uh, close this and we go back to here. Let me close off this window. I don't know. What, ah, OK, yep. it's just the two of us. Um, one of the things that I've started to do with the adult learners that I have, um, I always record all of the calls so that I send them the video recording so that they can see. But one of the tools that I use is I upload those video recordings and then I get it to analyze the problems that those students have and the problems that they had during the class. Where are you doing this? Ah, this is one that, that particular one that I'm using is one called uh, Write Panda. And I'll just I'll just put a link in there. Now, uh, if I if I remember, it doesn't it doesn't come super cheap. Uh, can I go into the live chat? Uh, let me see. I don't see where I can uh, live chat. Let me just put it into the private chat here. So it's called writepanda.io. Okay. Um, it, it, it will analyze videos. I mean, it'll, it'll extract videos, it'll get summaries of videos, but it allows you to create your own custom prompt. So what I did with this was I went in and I created a custom prompt. Is it this one? It's that one, yes. Okay. okay. Um, and when you go in, let me see if I can go in here. Do I have it here? Uh, move up to new window. Uh, let me go here. Okay. Um, well, I do this with Opus, which is a lot cheaper probably than this. Uh, Opus, yeah. And and how do you find it with Opus? As in th it, that it gives you the, does it give you an analysis or? No, that just, no, no, no. I was yeah. going back to where it has the, um, right here, where it says to make short videos. Ah, yes. So if, if anybody is following me and I'll put, I'll put a link, if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description box um, when we're done here. But um, if anybody is following me, what I do here, um, and I'll actually go into, wait, I don't know if, I don't know if, it, if I'm on the right one. Um, yes, okay. So I can actually go in to, um, to Opus. I take all of my long form content mm -hmm. and I put them into short form content. This literally, there's a free account and I'll put the link in the description box here so you can do this. If you're creating videos on YouTube, you totally should be using this because mm -hmm. it's really awesome. I don't know why it's taking so long to come up with the clips. Um, but uh, here it goes in here and you can see um, this is a short that I created from the YouTube video that I made the other day. And are you going to make a kid's channel or a regular YouTube channel? Now say, I don't, I didn't want this. This is important. Don't, don't go yet in there because it's a short and I don't need all of that. Mm -hmm. So I took that out, but you can, you can, uh, you know, say, say maybe I wanted all of this to be in here. I can actually change it. So you can go ahead and you can take your, Very good. Yeah, and you can actually go go through and um, change the layout by scene, so I can make it look different. Um, like I will, um, I can go through and take this live that we did that we're doing right now, and I could create it um, into shorts, and I could have it where it's like you on top of me, or I could have it where it's just like one person at a time. I can drag it and reframe it how I want it to be. And then it will automatically come up with all of the words that are going to be on the short, which makes it makes the content more engaging. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, all of these tools are really useful. And uh, as I say, I have to stop buying tools because I've just, I mean, I buy too many <laughs> of them. But, but this one here, for example, so this one has analyzed. And, and, and of course, I know this anyway, but I just wanted to see. So it's telling me its analysis is he struggles with fluency. He pauses a lot. Okay, so maybe, maybe I, maybe I heard that, but I, it didn't, it didn't really get uh, stuck in my head about how he pauses and how frequently he does. Uh, it's mostly correct, but simpler structure. So I might say, okay, what I want to do is I want to start helping with more complex grammar tenses. Um, it says if he finds it difficult to understand his book in English at a native speed. Okay. He needs repetition and clarification at times. Um, confidence. Okay. He is hesitant to speak without thinking first. Okay. Uh, when relaxed, his speaking improves, which is, which is 
completely true here. And then it says to help him, okay, these are what he needs to do. So here, I mean, after the lesson, I might send him an email and say, hey, Cesar, fabulous lesson. One of the, a couple of things that I noted was, let's slow down the speech, okay? Uh, make sure that, um, you know, you do more informal com conversation exchanges uh, with, with people, etc. Okay. And I might say, what we're going to do, or what I want you to do is I want you to take one word a day, one new word, write it out, um, etc. Okay. So, I mean, this is very good. I mean, this tool is extremely good for what it does. Um, as I said, I just went in and I just put in a prompt here. Okay. You're an expert on analyzing audio files and knowing what the student needs. Okay. Um, and I've just put that in and it comes up every time and it gives me, it gives me those particular results. But the other thing that it does, for example, with this video, uh, it gives me uh, titles for the possible video as well. Okay. If it was an interview, I could get those titles. I run a lot of, a, a lot of webinars that I can't attend. Um, if I have a download link, I run them through these tools so that I can get the main summary of them. So, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 here's here's the challenge. Once you get into this rabbit hole of AI, there are so many things, <laughs> and, I, and I mean it's it's just getting it's getting worse or it's getting better. I don't know which one it is. I mean, I was talking to one of my clients yesterday, and he said in his company they're using Microsoft Copilot, <coughs> and what it allows you to do is, <coughs> and I find this wonderful. If you can't attend a meeting, your Copilot will go in. It'll record the meeting. And then it'll give you a one minute summary and tell you any action items that were assigned to you. I wish I had that when I was working <laughs> in the office. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but but I, I, I think what's going to happen is. Could have been an email, right? <laughs> yeah. But I think what's going to happen is that there's going to be a meeting and 20 people are going to be invited. Two people will go and all of them will be just bots that will be listening. <laughs> in, and that'll be it. And eventually I'm sure the bot can actually answer in your tone. So, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the it's just. It's Wait, so this Amazon, or, sorry, this, this Google Copilot, it doesn't tell everybody like it makes no, Microsoft it, Bing. It does. Yes, it does. It tells so, okay, everybody. So, so they know that it's not the real person there, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, they know okay. it's not the real That'd person. That'd be really cool if it could like stand in for meetings and like, no, just no, it, it will come. It will come. I'm that sure. That would be so cool. Not related to online teaching, but no. I mean, yeah, you don't, you don't want it to be related to online teaching. So, <laughs> yeah, um, so, so cool. I mean, I th what I say to people is um, the first one, the first thing that you do want to do is you, you always want to think about that act as, okay? Um, act as a teacher, act as a parent, okay? Or I am a parent, but um, act as, always give the amount of years that you want the person to have experience in, okay? So act as, um, act as a, a let's say a teacher who has three years of experience, how can they market themselves to parents? Okay. How can they highlight their, their main key points? Because again, how I market myself after 20 years is going to be different to how somebody who's just started markets themselves. Yeah. So always give it plenty of information. And I'll show you one more thing that uh, I really liked. And again, we have to just be uh, a little bit careful to make sure that this works correctly uh where is my chat gpt window um bum 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 where is my chat gpt window okay are you like me with seven million tabs open in two uh, different chrome browsers and... yeah seven million on one uh well, no i've got two chrome browsers i've got my personal i've got my teachers i've got my helping te my teaching and my helping teaching so i have three different browsers attached to three different chrome profiles all with all oh. these <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the same. And then I lose a window and I actually, and I've lost you here because this is in Chrome. <laughs> and which Chrome is it in? Okay, so here we are, ChatGPT. Um, this is one that it came up on a, on a webinar that I was doing and it just came as an idea and it was, I was quite blown away by this. So uh, this would be more maybe for um, if you're working with adults. So do you know, do you know the series Friends? Okay. So it knows about friends, okay? So what I want to do, and again, I have to think, ah, my custom instructions are there about uh, working with kids. So this could cause a problem, but um, I want you to recommend an episode of Friends 
that contains uh, interesting business idioms. Okay. The one with all the Thanksgivings. Okay. Uh, the characters reminisce about their past and gives there are several instances where business idioms are used in humorous context. Can you give examples? Now, again, I would have to go and watch that episode of Friends to make sure. And cook the books by pretending to enjoy her terrible uh, Thanksgiving, although I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, it leads to some humorous situations in the red. Okay. Um, I mean, we would have to go back just to make sure because I, I ran this through another GPT and it gave me a different answer. But this could be useful as well if you had a, a kids' TV program that you wanted to refer to that you could say, do you know, I don't know, is Barney still around? Barney and Friends, is he still or is he retired? Um, but you could actually do that, that you could say, okay, this is the program. Give me some examples of episodes. And that could be something that you use for, for teachers as well, uh, or for parents, that you could say, uh, let me see, uh, do you know? So this is really good for adult English learners because if you are already working with adult ling English learners, you already know that they're all watching Friends. They're all watching yes. Friends yes. and Breaking Bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> and um, it helps relate to them. So you could even start creating content um, you could make this part of a lesson or you could create content for your channels that, um, they're going to, they're going to immediately relate to. And it's something fun. A lot of them like learning through friends and TV shows. So yeah, it, yeah. exactly. I, I may be breaking bad. You might say, okay, well, breaking bad, I want to use it to show how you shouldn't be aggressive or how you calm down a situation. They say, ah, oh, that's really good. Okay. Well, they so, cook the books in Breaking Bad, don't they? <laughs> they certainly do. And they cook a lot more than just the books. <laughs> I've never watched it, but um so so here, for example, and, and Barney, love him or hate him. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen him in years. Um, it says a little big day from season eleven, episode five. Okay. Uh the characters learn about the joy of helping others and being kind. So I might just go in here and put in Barney friends and see a little big day barney wiki okay uh so yeah okay so now here's a here's a barney wiki uh which i could go in and uh i'm not okay so i might see more about that okay and it gives me that episode there hopefully it's a, of barney there okay so that could be definitely something then that i could say okay i know my adult learners i know my um children that I'm teaching really like this. Now I've used this, I, I don't teach kids, but I have a friend and I, I, I teach her kid and she loves dystopian novels. Okay, um, Game of Thrones and all, well, Game of Thrones isn't dystopian, but uh, Hunger Games, that's the one I'm thinking about. So what I do is I go into ChatGPT and I say, I want you to write a short article or a, a short story in the, uh, in this, in a dystopian, uh, themed world uh, similar to the Hunger Games and it comes back with something. Now, this is where copyright issues come in because you're taking somebody's style and you're reproducing it. So that's where some people say <coughs> copyright issues are, are an issue. So we do have to be a little bit careful. I mean, if I start selling those materials on uh, Teachers Pay Teachers, then I'm going to have problems. But if I'm using it for my own classes, I think it's okay. But I'm not a lawyer, so don't say Richard yeah. said it's okay. Um, but you can you can do things like that, and that can be really good. Or songs in the style of. So I want you to write a song in the style of Happy Birthday or to the same tune as Happy Birthday. Actually, let's just try that. Uh, do Taylor Swift. Okay, Taylor Swift. Uh, I, I I will put in the command, you have to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. Let's see if I know the song. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what is the song going to be about? Um... Oh, okay. What should the song be about? Um, about kindness. No? Okay. Kindness. Uh, kindness. Uh, in the style of the Taylor Swift song. What song? Blank Space. There's a blank space. Oh. Now, I, I, I don't know that song, so let's have a look. It's like, nice to meet you. Where you been? I could show you. Okay. All right, so we got nice to meet you. Where you been? I can I see you're someone who believes in making a smile, spreading tears in a world that's some in a world that sometimes. Um, yeah, 
So it's going to be forever. It's going to go down in flames. Kindness is our treasure. We'll be the one who breaks the chains because we're kind hearted people doing good in the world. Oh, take my hand. Let's make a stand in this life where kindness reigns. I could do this better, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but at but least yeah, it's a, cool. <laughs> uh, what did I do? I, I did one actually that was very good. And I think it was uh, about AI in the theme of another brick in the wall by Pink Floyd. And it came out with a great song. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you think that people like Randy Rainbow and stuff are using this to make their parodies? Like like Randy Rainbow does like a lot of political things, for example, where he'll be like, you know, singing songs about like Donald Trump and Joe Biden or something. Like, do you think he tells like AI, like write me a song? I mean in the <laughs> in the style of this. In the style of never uh, even thought about this. Never uh, even thought about I, this. I don't know. Guns N' Roses. That's so funny. About Biden and Trump. I don't know. Uh, style it on Welcome to the Jungle. Oh God, I don't even want to know what it's going to come up with politics. No, I know, I know. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have a political. Okay, this is interesting because it doesn't have a political preference. Welcome to the White House. We got a new game. Okay, Welcome to the White House. We got a new game. We got Biden and Trump. It's a political flame. They're in the jungle where the power roars. I mean. Nation. I, I would suspect people people are doing that. Um, <laughs> uh, write a short story. I mean, this one I love. Uh, write a short story uh, in the style of Donald Trump. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But I mean, it does. I was going once upon a time. Uh, I went to the castle and it was huge. <laughs> it must be. Uh, I, I mean, I I did get one and it was just. Yeah, now there we go. Once upon a time, in this incredible world, there is this guy, a really successful guy, me, of course. No, I had these. I this, this, this is funny. This is funny. Um, you guys, the, the best part to the end of this. This is funny. Well, <laughs> One that I did, which was which was really useful for maybe sort of teenage learners, would be, um, uh, let me see, write about uh, write about the climate change in the style of a of a valley girl. Okay. No, you have to do the valley girl. I want you to read this. Oh my gosh! Like, have you ever noticed? Like, like totally crazy. The weather has been lately. It's like so not normal. I mean, hello, climate change. <laughs> okay, like seriously, <laughs> I love this. This is fun. This is fun. <laughs> so, so, so this could be. I mean, this could be useful. Uh, now, write it like a politician. Okay, uh, so uh, politician. So uh, politician. <laughs> Um, so you could definitely do comparisons like that. And you could say, okay, well, look at how you might write it and look how somebody who is 10 years older might write it. Okay. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Yeah. So we need to do something about it seriously. Okay. So I propose a strategic approach. Uh, the time is, is to act now. So like spread the word, you know, where the earth like super chill again. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, we could we could spend hours on this because there's just so much more that uh, that we could do on that. But start to think outside the box and say, okay, well, how could I use this to make those lessons much more um, interactive, much more exciting, um, in different tones? I mean, as well. I and, and I can do this uh, now. Write it in the style of an Irish farmer. <laughs> Can you oh. do an Irish farmer accent? Ah, oh, sure, isn't it a grand day to be talking about the land? Uh, uh, talking about the land and the weather will happen. Gather around, folks, for a bit of chat about that matter that's close to me heart. The change of climate. I've been tilling this soil for many years, and I've seen the changes I have. So, I mean, it, <laughs> I, I mean, it really does sound a little bit like that. So you could definitely show the different tones um, on that. Um, and again, I, I mean, you could say, well, look, this is where we have to be careful of um, songs that you might hear because maybe somebody is just, uh, and again, copyright that they're using a Taylor Swift tune to actually do this or Guns N' Roses or they're pretending to be. Not a lawyer, whatever. not a lawyer, but parodies are protected under the Fair Use Act. So ah. but the only the only thing is, is that um, 
you, this work is not yours anymore. So if you were to go and publish an album, and I, you guys aren't probably mm. aren't be publishing albums, but if you were to publish an album using ChatGPT um, to create the lyrics, though these songs do not belong to you. There's copyright issues. There have mm. been authors out there that just go through and be like, write me a novel about this. And then, you know, these are the main characters. And then a novel comes up, they publish it. That book doesn't belong to them. Anybody can take it and use it. It's public property now. Ah, interesting. So Again, not a lawyer, not legal. No, 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 no. I, I, mean, I know nothing, so don't take my word for it. But. We, we have to put a big sign up. We're not lawyers. Um, but, but I mean, this is where I say, try and set yourself a limit per day, per week that you use ChatGPT. Because I mean, you could go off and you could- You have a problem with it, don't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I swear, I swear, I don't. Hold on, I just need to check ChatGPT on my phone. Um, it, oh, you no. even have, you're even using it. No, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't. problem. <laughs> I have a problem. Uh, ChatGPT anonymous, you know. <laughs> That's you. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you could spend hours uh, on it. And but once, I mean, what we want to do as as educators, as teachers, is we need to get that edge of knowing how to use it. Because I know a lot of teachers that say, and in different groups that say, I wouldn't use it. It's not my work. It's not original. It's a time saving tool. It mm -hmm. really is. Um, one of the things, and and uh, I mean, with with your permission in the group, I'll I'll drop this down. I do have a bu, 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 where is it? I do have a little um, uh, guide that I put together. It's about it's it's about twenty pages, and it goes through how to build up the commands in ChatGPT. Okay, you have a link for that. Do I ha I have a link for that. Let me just find on the okay. on the four hundred. So what I will windows. do, um, if you're in our Facebook group, and I think the people that are watching this right now are on YouTube, but if you are in the Facebook group, go on over to Facebook if you want this guide. Um, and if you are not in the Facebook group, I will put this um, here. You, you can actually post it in the in here, but I'll add it to the description box too. Okay, uh, where am I going here? Okay, and. Uh, this also gives a replay of an, another webinar that I did uh, with one of my colleagues where we talk about um, how to use uh, ChatGPT in your teaching. And yeah. she gives a really interesting example of how she taught politics, uh, the political system of the Netherlands in Europe to her, uh, were they 10th grade students, I think? I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it was it's quite fascinating. I mean, what you can do is is, is fascinating. Okay, so I'm going to be putting this in the live chat here. So you can go ahead. Here is the link for this, and I will add it to the description box if you are watching the replay. Um, this was all great. We I have taken up an hour of your time, and we could go. No, it's been a pleasure. With this, because we basically we basically only did Chat GPT today. Oh, there's a ton of other tools out there. Th so. There's a ton of other tools, and we sang and we laughed. So it's <laughs> it's a win. Donald Trump, we're Donald Trump for a huge moment. It was the moment. It was the greatest moment in the world. Okay, all right. So thank you for coming on today, Richard. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're gonna end this. And guys, if this is your first time coming to this channel, we are going to be doing interviews with teachers every uh, Thursday at the same time. So 10 30 Eastern standard time, make sure you're subscribed. And if Richard was helpful, give this video a like, and I will see you guys all next Thursday.